Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial about Godot using Rust and an entity component system framework like Bevy in that case. So what we're gonna do in the beginning is like just setting up the project. Um, let's call it Hello Bevy. Then we create it and use just the, the simple renderer with OpenGL ES2. And then we just start setting up our project so that we have the hello world example first up and running with Godot and Godot native and then we work further to get Bevy inside. So as you can see we just renamed now our node2d to scene. We will now start the Visual Studio code and drag and drop the project folder in it so that we can access it. Then we start to create a new package using target new and we want to create the library so therefore we pass the dash dash lib argument and the project name what we call in that case script. Then we use code dot to open exactly this script folder. Then we just remove all the standard implementation when you create a new um, cargo project or Rust project and add our dependencies the go.native 0.11. Please note that this is working with the Godot version 3.5.1. So in case that you are using another Godot version, this might introduce some breaking uh, changes and therefore would not work. So please ensure that the proper uh, Godot version is used in conjunction with the proper Godot native version. Then we just add the create type, which is a CDY lib, and then we try to build our project. Once it has successfully compiled, Let's head into the go.rust example folder and extract here the hello world example so that we just have a basic template already up and running. And this template we will then slightly modify but let's first try to build it. So build was successful and let's hook the Rust project now or the Rust script folder with Godot. Therefore, we need to attach a new script and we need to pass the exact proper name. Let's call it in that case Hello Baby. So we rename it instead of Hello World. And then we need to ensure that we select here the native script and the class name is actually Hello Baby. Then we are heading over to the library and create a new go.native library and here we will finally be able, depending on your operating system, to link the project. Therefore you go to the script folder under targets and select your CYD lib um, compiled target. Then we just call it one more time press the play button and at least we should now see kind of a hello world exactly. If we are heading back, you can see here the line, line 15, where we printed out hello world. So we know now our script is up and running and hooked properly. So let's say it's not script, but our library. The next thing what we're going to do is now integrate Bevy, more particular the entity component system from Bevy. So therefore we are heading to the examples from Bevy and then look quickly through the code so that we see um, what we need to do. So let's start by creating a new ECS um, Rust file and also let's create a quick struct called ECS and then let's quickly refactor a bit in this current project. So we split, for example, the content of the Hello Baby in a separate file called scene.rs. Please note that we cannot extract everything there because the go.init with the init method should be actually taking place in the lib.rs. So therefore we remove it afterwards. And here we keep it in the libres and then we remove just the hello uh, baby related code. Then we need to add the import and register the module as well so that we are able to use it. If for some reason the auto completion is not working properly, just build the project again or reload the web view for a 
from Visual Studio Code. Then we can reference the create module. And we also need to ensure, of course, that our struct hello bevy is accessible as a public, otherwise the module resolution will not work. Great, let's try to build again and if there is no error, that means everything went through as expected. Now it's time actually to try it again in, in Godot and the hello world was still displayed properly, so everything seems to be okay. Now we are heading over to the Bevy ECS library. So therefore we look for at create.io, the dependencies and the proper version. Heading forward to our cargo TOML file, we add now the dependency baby ECS equals and then the version 081. Next, we are triggering again a cargo build so that the dependencies get fetched. Then let's start the implementation for the ECS already. So first of all, we need to import the baby dependency or the module. So therefore we just type use baby ECS and then we use the prelude in order to import everything what is exported by the module. Then we add the word um, property to the ECS which is of the type word. For some reason it seems like that my auto completion is still not working yet. However, we just continue for now and implement a, a default trade actually so that we can initialize the ECS with a default initialization. So therefore we just return the ECS at that point with word and then we reference the word from BEP, which also has a default implementation available. Then we try to build it again. And everything went through, so now we need again to ensure that we import everything properly in our CNRS file where we reference our ECS, which is currently for not found. So we forgot to declare the module, so therefore we go back to the lib mod and put there the ECS. Then heading back, we can finally import it and use it in our hello baby structure. So what we're going to do is we extend here and put the ECS in, which reference our ECS. And then we need to ensure that we also export again the variable if needed. And here we just say ECS and then ECS with the two dots and then um, call the default. For some reason this is not working. Okay, first of all the ECS needs to be public for visibility. And then there is still a problem with the default, as it seems I did not implement the trade properly. So the problem is here actually that in the impl I need to add implementation default for ECS. So this should do the trick now. If we are heading back to the scene, this seems to be also fine. And now let's try to build it again with cargo build. There seems to be an error. This is related to the semicolon, but I forgot to remove here. Build it again and everything seems to be successfully compiled. We just put the public here that you can have a public accessibility. Um, it might be not required, I just add it for yeah, convenience for now. By the way, it's not a good practice to put everything in public uh, by default. And now finally we can start with the real implementation of the ECS. So what we're gonna do at the beginning is like the implementation for ECS where we just create some entities for test purpose. 
So therefore, we need first to declare a new component in order to register this one to Bevy. So we call it a scene entity in our case, which contains currently x and y as coordinates. This is kind of a position, as you saw it here on the right side, but we will, during this tutorial, um, we will extend it. So therefore, we just call it in a more generic form. Of course, um, it would make sense to have more fine granular components, uh, but yeah, it should be just a very simple example about how to use. So we derive from the component, and then we start the implementation. We access the world and insert, uh, so we first spawn, then, so this is the method what we need to invoke, and then we are able to insert new entities in the world using the in insert method, and then just our entity with some declaration for the properties like x and y. So we create one at 0, 0, one at 40, 40, and one at 80, 80 coordinates. Next, we declare our method here as public so that we can access it from external. Then we're heading back to the CNRS and then ensure that in the ready method we actually create the entities. Then we need to change the mutability of the ready method so that this one can be execute it as required. Then we also implement another method so that we get the entity out more precisely that we see what kind of entities are currently added to the world and also a potential count to it. So that means this method will actually return a vector containing the entity. And because of the circumstances how the borrow checker works, we actually will need to update our uh, scene entity with clone capabilities and debugging cap capabilities so that we are able to print out their value on one hand and on the other hand that we can clone the components and then forward it to the other function. So now we just implement a quick empty vector what we return and then we start the real implementation in this method body. With the ECS um, framework itself, we usually will try to get from the word actually kind of a query out for a specific type, what we want to receive. So therefore, we need to say self.word.query and then we pass in the type what we actually want to extract. Then we store it in a variable, let's call it query. And we also need to ensure that actually query will be mutable later on. Now we can run the query by using a for. So we want to get the entity out with an in, and then we just say our query dot iterator like iter, and then we pass the word as an argument to it. Then we just use the go.print in order to print our entity here. So therefore we need to extend our uh, scene entity and we also need to import go.native uh, the preload so that we are able to print the message to go. 
Next we are heading to the debug derive plus the clone. As a last step, we will now declare a new vector, as a mutable vector actually. So and we need to update also here the uh, variable declaration with mute. And then we change it, or uh, we append actually stuff to this result and return it afterwards. And the items what we append here or actually push to the vector is or are the entities. And in order to push them out, we need to clone them. Otherwise, the borrow checker will notice and give us some warning or even errors. And in the ready method, we therefore will just continue now, get the entities out and then print the current count of the available entities. Then let's quickly compile again the library and heading back to Godot to test if the printout statements are working as expected. And here in the console you can see the entities and the number of items. We are now at the end of the part one tutorial using Bevy entity component system with Rust Godot. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I can welcome you again to the part two of the upcoming session. Thank you for watching.